Hey Team Electronics and Coding, um, this is a brief follow-up screencast, hopefully it'll be brief, um, on Intro to Coding. You have looked at this circuit and now you're building a circuit that says something about you with different lights and buttons. Um, and I'm just going to take a little time here to talk about some of the components, um, what we call them, and a little bit of the code. Okay, so you all know that we have two broad categories of components. We have actuators and we have sensors. Actuators take electrical inputs and they give us a physical output. So for example, an LED takes an electrical input and then the physical output that it gives us is light. Sensors take physical inputs and then give us electrical outputs. So the button is a sensor. When we press it, we get a connection between power here to ground here, and then we sense that on this wire. So either this wire is reading a voltage of zero or um, something non-zero. Um, okay, so we write to actuators, we read sensors. Uh, I guess I should also say that actuators are outputs and sensors are inputs. Okay, um, a variable. A variable is something in your code that holds or stores a piece of data. Um, they can have a type, or they do have a type, and different types can store different types of information. Uh, more on that later. Um, you define your variables, so you should give them descriptive names. Also more on that later. Okay, a function, in contrast, is like a tiny little program, a, a program within your program. Um, there are built-in functions, so functions that you can call that the computer already knows what you mean when you when you write them out, or you can define your own functions. That We'll, we'll learn how to do that later in the year. For now, we're going to be using built-in functions. Um, the syntax of a function is really important, so you need to use all of the right letters and the correct case, like uppercase or lowercase, to call a function. If you, and the same is true of variables, if you use the wrong letters or the wrong cases, um, then you're not going to call the right functions or um, you're not going to be uh, accessing the variables that you've created. Um, whenever you call a function, there are a couple different steps. You write the name of the function using the right syntax. You add parentheses after the function. So a good clue is anytime you see two parentheses, you know there's a function directly preceding that. Um, you sometimes add arguments inside the parentheses. This is, depending on the functional function, this can be optional. Or not. Um, and then curly braces enclose the steps um, that the function executes um, after the function. Uh, more on that later as well. But curly braces, important. And then the function ends with a semicolon. Okay, so let's talk about our code very quickly. First of all, we start our code by creating a variable. Um, create, one second, uh, we created our variable and we called it button state. Um, now the reason why we gave it this name is because this variable is going to, um, store the value of our button. We created an int type, so we can still, it's an integer type variable so we can store whole numbers um sorry my dog is barking um this uh variable um is we set it initially to equal the value of zero um okay so that's what we did right at the beginning is we declared a variable button state um, it's, we're going to use it to store the value of our button, and it is an integer type variable. Okay, the next thing that happens is we proceed to the setup. Setup is followed by two parentheses. This should clue you into the fact that it is a function. Um, the setup function, as you know, runs... Whoops, that's not how you spell runs. It runs once at the start 
of the program. And um, within the setup, there are three other functions. And the functions inside the setup are called pin mode. Um, the pin mode function contains two arguments. They're um, separated by a semicolon. Argument number one of pin mode is the pin number. So if you look at here, you can see we've written pin mode three. Pin mode three tells us that we have hooked up our button, uh, or sorry, our Arduino to pin three. And then the next argument that pin mode takes is whether or not we have an input or an output. So when we hook up wires to the Arduino here, the Arduino doesn't know what these wires are connected to necessarily unless we tell it. Um, because we declared pin mode three and four as um, outputs and input two, or pin, mo pin mode two as an input, we're telling um, the Arduino that we've hooked up a sensor to pin two and two actuators to pins three and four. So anytime you write input, this means you've connected a sensor to the Arduino, and if you write output, you've connected an actuator. A-C-T-U-A-T-O-R. Okay, great. So within the setup, we tell um, our uh, Arduino what we've connected where. Uh, okay. The next thing that we're doing is proceeding, and this um, curly brace uh, opens and closes the setup function. So the computer knows that the void setup, the setup starts here and it ends here. And because the program only runs only once, it runs through this, 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 and then it knows that it's over, and so we move to the loop. The loop is a piece of the code that loops around thousands of times per second. So we start at the top, and we go down through the code, and then we come back up, and we continue, and the Arduino will keep running this code until you load new code, or you restart the program, or you turn the Arduino off. Um, okay, so the loop is another function. It doesn't take any arguments, just like the setup, but it does have an open and close curly brace. So these are the boundaries of our loop. This opens the loop, and this closes the loop. So this is like the top of the loop, and this is the bottom of the loop. Um, okay. The first thing we do within the loop is we perform another function. This function is called digital read. Digital read only takes one argument, and that argument is the pin number to read. Now, you recall that um, when we, we talked about digital and analog, and something that's digital is going to have two values, one or zero, high or low, on or off. So when we perform a digital read of pin two, we're asking um, the Arduino, um, does is there a voltage here or is the voltage zero? Um, so digital read means that we can only get two states back, either we're going to get a low reading or a high reading. We could also say zero or one. Okay, so digital read pin two is going to return a value. And that value is going to be stored in the variable that we created up here in um, this is called this, we created what's called a global variable because we created it up um, before the void setup and the loop. This means that we can use it anywhere in the program. We're only using it in the loop, but anyway, it's a global variable. Um, so we store the digital reading of pin two in our button state um, by setting it equal. So whenever you see something that looks like this, 
A equals B. This means to the computer, set, oops, set A equal to the value of B. Um, so we're telling the computer, we're telling the Arduino to read pin two. If the value is zero, we store this as equal to zero or low. And if the value of digital read two is high or one, we store one or high in this button state. They mean the same thing. Um, okay, so anytime you read A equals B, this means set A equal to the value of B. So we store the reading of the button in the button state variable. Okay, the next piece is an if function. And within the if function is a condition. It's a little bit different than what we see here with a single equal sign, because you'll notice there are two equal signs. Here we've said A equals equals B. And this is not the same thing as saying A equals B to the Arduino. Here, this is a condition that the computer is going to evaluate. We're asking the question, does A equal the value of B? Question mark. Um, so we've said if the button state is high. If this is true, if this returns true, meaning if the button state is high or the button state is one, then we proceed to the curly braces within the, that follow the if statement. Um, and we digital write, which is another function. So digital write is our last function here. And digital write takes two arguments. The two arguments that digital write takes are the pin number and high or low or one or zero. You can write high or one or you can write low or zero. Any of those will work. Okay, so if we, um, if this condition is true, we will execute what is within this curly braces. We will digital write three high, we'll turn three on, and we'll turn four off. Else happens if this condition is false or not true. If the button state is not equal to high, we'll execute what is in between the curly braces that follow the else statement. Basically, we do the opposite. We write three low and four high. Um, okay, I think that's it. That's all you need to know uh, about this code for now. Thanks for listening.